Hi, it's Dwyer here drinking coffee. Gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, I'm not a psychiatrist. I have no medical degrees whatsoever. I have no pieces of paper that say that I'm qualified to make the far-reaching conclusions and generalizations on personality and psychology that I'm going to make in this video. But this is YouTube. We all have opinions. I'm going to share mine on the mental makeups of Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather. Right now, first let me say, there's a fascinating video here online. I came across it on BoxingScene.com. Um, it's an interview of Teddy Atlas, a gambler I follow. Right, I'll call him a gambler. He's also a trainer. He also does other things. Right, but Teddy Atlas is a gambler I follow. And he's asked by Radio Rahim, pretty good interviewer, about his thoughts on Pacquiao Mayweather. Right, now Atlas thinks Pacquiao has a chance. He feels that Pacquiao has the foot speed to keep up with Floyd in a way that other opponents did not, right? Notably Canelo, right? Atlas also believes that Pacquiao has the hand speed and the volume to keep up with Mayweather, right? Now, I like Mayweather in the fight. I actually feel the last six rounds of the fight are not going to be close, the question for me is whether Mayweather can offset what I'm calling a charisma gap, right? I believe when the guys enter the ring, Pacquiao is going to be a round and a half up on the scorecards, right? Why? Because people don't like Mayweather, right? People love Manny Pacquiao, right? Pacquiao also is a uh, guy who, how do you put it, people know is mortal. So I believe that makes him a more compelling public figure. Now, none of this should have anything to do with boxing, but it does. Right? I believe if Floyd sits back the first three rounds and allows Manny Pacquiao to have the kind of start that Zab Judah had against Floyd Mayweather, Right, Mayweather's going to find himself at the end of three rounds in a four and a half round hole on the scorecards. Right now, I believe Mayweather will make the adjustments. I believe personally Mayweather is the vastly superior technician in the ring. Right, I'm expecting Mayweather to dominate late. The question for me is going to be whether the judges see it that way or whether they get caught up in the moment, right, in the crowd dynamic of rooting for David. As Wilt Chamberlain, who I'll mention later in this video, once commented, no one roots for Goliath, right? So be careful here. I've seen other fighters, Oscar De La Hoya against Felix Trinidad, right? Lose the crowd and then lose a fight in a decision that could have gone either way. But the Raheem Teddy Atlas video really gets interesting when they start talking about the physical makeup of the fighters. Right? I'll leave Teddy's conclusions to those who want to watch that video. Let me give you my conclusions. Right? And again, I'm overgeneralizing here. Right? I have no educational background in this area. Just years of experience watching professional athletes. Let's name three personality types. Right? Now, let me say this. I believe personalities are like cement. I don't believe that one personality group can say to another group, you need to change your ways or I'm going to change you, right? None of us want to date the woman who wants to change us, right? Hey, baby, if it's not good right now, then it's not good, period, right? Understand the things that people want to change in you sometimes are what makes you you are what makes your life enjoyable. So let's talk about three personality types. Right? The first is the master of a game. 
who also needs to play hard personality type. Right? This is the athlete who is simply brilliant in one sport. Knows it frontward, knows it backward. Is just on top of the game. But who needs to party hard? He needs to be in Las Vegas. He needs to be in New York City. He needs to be around beautiful women. He might have a girlfriend in several different cities. And I'm not talking about the same woman. Right? Whatever is going on for public consumption. The wife, the white picket fence, the house in the suburbs, the house in the Tony neighborhood. Right? The charity events where the guy's making public appearances. Right? The commercials where the guy's conveying a certain image. Whatever is happening for the public, whatever movie this individual is playing for the public, in private he has a life where, quite frankly, he's sleeping around. He's out late at night. Right? Now, I would say in sports, the poster child for this personality type was Tiger Woods. Right? We're talking about a guy who had one image for the public, but who now we find out had several women, many of whom have given interviews in different cities, right? who he was consorting with. Right? We now know that he was even consorting with people involved in the porn industry. Now understand, an argument can be made that that Tiger Woods was the best golfer to ever live. Right? I'm someone who believes in balance. I believe that if you take away the partying part of Tiger Woods, you might be taking away part of the golfing part of Tiger Woods. Right? Has Tiger been on his game since that scandal broke? Not so. Right? Not so. Right? A great NBA head coach, a Hall of Famer, a guy named Lenny Wilkins, used to say that you can't take away the part of an athlete that, you know, the athlete enjoys. Right? I believe it's a mistake for any of us to say to an athlete who is playing hard and partying hard, hey, you need to cut out the partying. Understand, the party side of the equation might be the reason the guy is a professional athlete. I know when I was a kid, me and my boys dreamt of playing in the major leagues, right? I wasn't thinking too hard about balls and strikes. I was thinking about beautiful women, nightclubs, late night, right, champagne, you know, being a celebrity. Now, if you were to tell me that I couldn't have any of that, hey then I might not have wanted to have been a Major League Baseball player. Other people in this zone of master of their game, but also needing to play hard, are Ray Leonard. Right? Now, I know Ray is older. It's fun to see people from the 70s now as full-blown adults. right? But I'm telling you, there are shows where Ray's boys, his honorage, right, talk about life in the late 70s. You know, Ray Leonard really was a Babe Ruth type character. Right? Ray Leonard himself has some regrets about how his marriage at the time dissolved. Right? In part because Ray wasn't home as much as he should have been. But in the ring, Ray Leonard was brilliant. Right? Another guy, different profession. F. Lee Bailey. Right? You know, they claim, according to folklore and rumor, that F. Lee, uh, you know, liked a strong drink. I'll tell you what, if you look at the O.J. trial, if you remember the O.J. trial, F. Lee Bailey, really without notes, was the best lawyer in that courtroom. Right? I mean, you know, some guys can walk the high wire. Right? I'm sure all of us know people who are brilliant in whatever field they're in, who, in their free time, like to hit the bottle, like to get out a little bit, like to stay out a little late. Let's talk about a different personality type. It's a mild difference, but it's also a significant difference. 
This is the person who might be master in their sport. But they're also master in other things. Right? These are Renaissance people. Right? In other words, yeah, I'm great in boxing or I'm great in basketball. But you know what? That's only one of the things I do. Right? I'm also interested in other things. Right? These people tend to have four or five things that they're very interested in. Right? We know them for their dominance in one area, but they're dominant in other areas. And of course, this person also plays hard, plays very hard. In other words, they're burning the candle at both ends. You wonder how this person is fitting their life in the 24 hours every day. Let me name some of the people in this category, right? And these are people who, you know, read a lot, study a lot, are out a lot, are doing a lot of things. The speedometer never goes below 70 miles an hour, right? Jack Johnson, Wilt Chamberlain, Carlos Monzon, today, Jameis Winston, right? Allen Iverson, right? These are the folks who, right, you find out. What you know about them is just the tip of the iceberg. So Jameis Winston, for example, plays baseball. Is a very good baseball player. Very good baseball player. Right? We know him as the football player he is, the Heisman Trophy winner he is, the likely first pick of the NFL draft that he is. But understand, football is just one game Jameis Winston plays. Right? Carlos Monzon. You know, this guy, if you look at his record, I believe Monzon at one point wins something like 70 fights in a row or something. You look at him in the ring, he has one of the dominant jabs in boxing history. He hit like a freight train. Right? He's the kind of guy who could be completely baffled in a fight. He's hurt nearly out against Benny Briscoe. And then he deconstructs his opponent and could come back. Obvious Boxing Hall of Famer, one of the best middleweight champions in history. But did you know that Carlos Monzon was a guy who was also acting in movies? You know, Carlos Monzon was a guy who had many interests. In fact, for historians, if you look more deeply into his past, you're going to find out that Carlos Monzon had a very colorful start to his career where apparently he was involved in the prostitution game right we know Monzon as a boxer Monzon had a lot of interests boxing was just one of them this is a guy who just happened to be one of the best middleweights in history right Let's talk about Manny Pacquiao right here. I believe that's who Manny Pacquiao is. Right? Understand that's very different than Floyd Mayweather. Manny Pacquiao is a guy who has many interests. Many. Right? Pacquiao plays basketball. You know, Pacquiao is a guy who doesn't train year round. Right? When he's not scheduled for a fight, he's out playing basketball with his boys. That's what he enjoys. He's out running for Congress in the Philippines. Right? He's out singing. I'm not kidding. He's out singing, cutting records. Right? Boxing makes everything else possible. But understand, Manny Pacquiao has many coals in the fire. Right? If boxing didn't work out for him, Manny Pacquiao would still be committed to government in the Philippines. Manny Pacquiao would still want to go out and hoop with his boys. You understand, Manny Pacquiao would still want to cut records and sing on records. He'd still want to act in movies. That's who Manny Pacquiao is. 
right? He's a multi-continent guy, right? He's up and about living the kind of life, and he has to move, right? Pacquiao's a guy who doesn't want to stay in one town forever. He has to move. He has to be on the go. He's the kind of guy who, you know, is living a very full life. Now, I know Pacquiao has found God. But Pacquiao, dare I say, was a bit like Tiger Woods a little while ago. Right? There's stories about Pacquiao with actresses. Right? Now, it's a little bit risque because Pacquiao, of course, was married at the time. Right? Pacquiao has sorted through his life. But understand, Pacquiao was a man about town. In other words, Pacquiao, championship fighter. That wasn't all he had in his life. Right? He had the full social life. He's out hitting restaurants. He's out doing this, that, and the other. Right? That's who Manny Pacquiao is. Now, by contrast, let's name another personality type. There's the all-in crowd, right? This crowd, no party. And by party, you know what I mean, right? No liquor, no real late nights, no hanging out, checking out the view in different cities, watching the sun come up with, you know, I don't know, some woman you just met the night before or hours before or maybe even after midnight that day, right? This crowd is the crowd that has a far more corporate approach, right? They're masters of their game, but their games are their lives, right? Maybe they're CEO types. Maybe they've built a business around their game. But their game is what it's about. Their payoff isn't the Tiger Woods lifestyle. It's not, you know, different babe in different city and, oh, let's go check out the club, right? Or, hey, let's just order champagne to the room. No, that's not the reason why they are athletes. No, with this third group, they're athletes because they need to compete. They need to be dominant. That's the payoff, right? It's not some gorgeous babe who, you know, is Tuesday and there's going to be a Thursday and a Saturday. No, no. It's the dominance in their game. I believe Peyton Manning falls into this group. I believe Bernard Hopkins falls into this group. I believe Floyd Mayweather falls into this group. Now, let me say this, and I don't say it lightly. There are only 24 hours in a day. I don't care what lifestyle you're living, right? You're not going to get 25 hours or 26 hours. The third group is so committed to their craft. Again, think Peyton Manning, right? Keep in mind, they're not keeping late nights. They're not out partying. Their payoff is the score in the sporting event in which they're in, right? Andrew Luck, I could throw him in this group, right? And so this group masters their sport better than the other groups. In other words, the other groups, they're dominant, right? They're dominant, but they don't study the sport on the same level as a guy who is always sober, who is always thinking about the sport, right? Bernard... Hopkins talks about how he didn't have a donut for more than a decade, right? Picture that ever happening to Will Chamberlain or Tiger Woods, right? Think about it, right? I'm guessing Manny Pacquiao had donuts last week, right? Bernard Hopkins said he didn't have a donut for a decade, right? Because he was that committed to his craft, 
you know, understand Bernard's payoff isn't running the streets of Philly late at night and being out on the town and getting his name on the celebrity page of the local paper. That's not his thing. Nor is it keeping reporters from his secret life or, you know, gambling on golf courses like Jordan, who belongs in the second group, used to do. Right. When he wasn't gambling in casinos. Right. When he wasn't out playing baseball himself in his free time. Right. No, for Bernard, it's about boxing. I believe for Floyd Mayweather, it's about boxing. Right. It's very different for these guys. Right. Mayweather lives and breathes boxing. Mayweather is thinking boxing. When Manny Pacquiao is out at a government function in the Philippines talking about building the local hospital. Right? Floyd Mayweather was thinking boxing when Manny Pacquiao was out cutting a record and then singing on the Jimmy Kimmel show. Right? So the guys are different. Manny's blessed with great hand speed, great foot speed, great power, accuracy in his left hand. Right? He's blessed. Floyd Mayweather also is blessed with above average hand speed and foot speed and accuracy in both hands. The difference between the two guys is both guys know they're gifted in boxing. But they're going to be parts of Manny Pacquiao's day that he spends in the political world that he spends in the basketball world, that he spends in the music world, that he spends out on the town with his entourage, right? That Floyd Mayweather is going to spend in the gym, right? Talking boxing with his boxing family, Uncle Roger, Father Floyd, right? You know, Mayweather's going to be thinking about the economics of the sport. Mayweather's going to be looking at other fighters. Think about it. Floyd claims he doesn't look at film. But yet he knew that something was wrong. And he knew to ask for a drug test during the first Manny Pacquiao fight negotiation. Not only that, in interviews from that era, Floyd actually talked about Pacquiao's history. He knew Pacquiao's history. I'm sure today if someone stops Floyd in an alley and says to him, name me the people Manny Pacquiao has lost to, Floyd can do so inside of 30 seconds. I believe if someone stopped Manny Pacquiao in a back alley and said to him, you know, tell me about who Mayweather has fought in the last three years, I don't think Manny Pacquiao in 30 minutes could come up with all of the names because Manny Pacquiao is busy thinking about his life, right? His life has a lot of moving parts, right? So with their games, guys like Floyd and Bernard Hopkins have certain skills that they've developed, right? That they themselves were the impetus for developing. Somebody didn't have to come to them and say, hey, Floyd, you need to tighten this part of your game up. No, these guys are living the sport. So a guy like Mayweather, I don't think anybody is harder on Floyd Mayweather than Floyd Mayweather. Just like I don't think anybody's harder on Bernard Hopkins than Bernard Hopkins. This is not to say that these guys don't have great advisors around them, right? As I like to mention to people, Floyd Sr. was an elite trainer. He was the trainer for Oscar De La Hoya in Oscar's heyday. Right? Roger Mayweather was actually the better fighter than Floyd Sr. Roger Mayweather was a world-class fighter back in the day. Right? Obviously, Bernard is with Nassim Richardson. Right? One of boxing's elite trainers. These guys have great advisors. But understand, these guys are paying much closer attention to detail then let's say the Wilt Chamberlains right Wilt never could hit free throws right or the Manny Pacquiao's right so 
let me say, personality-wise, right, focus-wise, to me, boxing means more to Floyd Mayweather than it does to Manny Pacquiao, right? To me, Pacquiao is the guy who shows up, talks with the people he's hired, Freddie Roach and stuff, and has to say things like, hey, tell me about who we're fighting. You know, his strengths and weaknesses. What strategy do you have for us to pursue? Right? That's the Manny Pacquiao approach. I believe the Floyd Mayweather approach is very different. I believe Floyd studies opponents for years. For years. Right? Floyd Mayweather shows up. He's already on third base. He's not stepping out of the dugout like Manny Pacquiao is walking to the batter's box. He's already on base. He's thought about Manny Pacquiao for years, right? His conversations are different. They're the kind of conversations a CEO has with a member of his board, right? Floyd's going to walk in and Floyd's going to say, you know what? Here's what I see on film. Here's what I think. Here's the strategy that I believe will work. Then he say, how do you see it? What are your ideas, right? Don't get me wrong. Floyd's personality type wants very skilled people around him. So he'll say to Roger or Floyd Sr. or whoever he trusts, right? He'll say, hey, look, what do you see on film? And then they'll talk to him. It's an information sharing. As opposed to Manny Pacquiao showing up and saying, okay, Freddie, what are we going to do? How do you want me to handle it? As I've said in different videos, you know, Manny's really more of a soldier in the ring. He's listening to his corner, right? Floyd Mayweather at all times is really more of a CEO, right? He's seeing what's going on. He has a strategy. There's a big picture that he himself has created. So, Manny Pacquiao's right hand, in my opinion, is underdeveloped. I understand there are people online who disagree strongly with me on that grade. Let them, right? Manny Pacquiao's right hand is underdeveloped. That wouldn't happen to Floyd Mayweather, right? Because Mayweather lives and breathes boxing, right? Mayweather's much more two-handed than Manny Pacquiao, right? Pacquiao, because he's out more with the crowd, knows what the crowd wants more than Floyd Mayweather. Right? So Pacquiao has a little extra flourish. More flourish than Floyd has. Right? Mayweather, by contrast, thinks that everyone knows boxing as well as him. Or that the people who know boxing should see that his defense is stopping the punches of his opponent. I personally feel that there's never a time in the 24 rounds in which Floyd fought Marcus Maidana where Floyd ever felt even threatened or challenged by Marcus Maidana. I get the feeling after the first fight, Mayweather was probably a little bit surprised to hear that there was anybody in the crowd who thought that the fight was within the area code of Maidana being declared the winner. I'm sure Floyd had to go back and look at the film of that fight, and even when he did, I'm guessing... Mayweather looks at his defense and says, what, don't the people see that to get around my defense, Maidana had to throw low punches? Doesn't everyone see that? By contrast, Manny Pacquiao is the guy who has been out late with the people who are in the crowd. Right, Pacquiao is the guy who has met the people in the crowd in different parts of his life, in politics, in entertainment. Right? So Pacquiao understands, hey, if a guy backs Floyd Mayweather up against the ropes and then lets his hands go, whether the punches land or not, that's going to excite the crowd. That might excite the judges who want to see a little bit of relish on the hot dog. Right? So understand, these two guys are from very different worlds, in my opinion, right? Very different worlds, right? I, you know, 
I'm not sure if a Wilt Chamberlain would understand a Peyton Manning. Right? Wilt would look at Peyton and would say, where's the payoff? You know, don't you want to be out on the town with all these women? Don't you, haven't you built up your celebrity so you could use your celebrity to have late nights with gorgeous women and great views? Right? I don't think a Peyton Manning would understand a Will Chamberlain. He would say, gee, what's the point of all this sleeping around and all this partying if it's going to hurt your ability to perform on game day? Right? It's totally different. So understand, you know, Floyd Mayweather, from what I've heard, does not drink. He's not a big-time partier. Right? He's not a guy who tours around with the kind of entourage on the kind of level that Manny Pacquiao does. Understand, too, the focus extends to money. Right? Manny's had some financial problems. I'm guessing Floyd Mayweather couldn't envision not knowing where his money is, right? Not having a say in where his money is, not having a say in the deals that he's negotiated, right? And so I do believe these guys are different. I think the end result is that Floyd's game is more developed than Manny Pacquiao's game. That Floyd's level of preparation is more advanced than Manny Pacquiao's level of preparation will be for this fight. Right? That Manny's corner is more important with regard to what Manny does in a fight than Floyd's corner is because Floyd is the CEO in his corner. Right? Floyd's the one creating and furthering the big picture. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. If there are other athletes you want to talk about and other personality types, go ahead and leave those comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.